All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Wednesday, July 7th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee, a special meeting where we're looking at uh, two expedited review requests. And that is our main goal here. Um, we are expecting one other member uh, and she will hopefully join us soon. Uh, and before we get going on that, we always begin each meeting with general public comments. Uh, oh, good, here comes Jen. So if anyone has any comments out there, those that are not on the committee having to do with anything CPC related, not having to do with the expedited proposals, now is the time to speak. No, good for that. Okay, I thought we'd uh, adjust items just a little bit and begin with introduction of our two new members. So I'd like to welcome to the committee, Jana White. Jana is our planning board representative and is replacing Alan and Jen Smith. And Jen, you joined us last meeting, correct? Just to make sure that, that was you, right? Yeah, um, to make sure we were uh, okay in your books. And I guess we are. So Jen joins us as the Cons Conservation Commission representative uh, replacing uh, Jack. So two of you, welcome. If you ever have questions, yay. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you ever have questions or comments, please speak up. Uh, Jen, you I think we said this last meeting, while you represent Conservation Commission, we expect and value your input on all facets of community preservation. And Jana, your expertise seems to be in planning, but again, uh, looking to you for your knowledge and your experience with everything that we do. Um, so welcome, thank you. And again, if you have any uh, suggestions or comments, talking to Sarah or myself or any members of the committee, we have a lot of people who've been here for a long time. So we, our goal is to make you feel comfortable and help you out if, you, if need be. We have minutes to approve. Sarah sent us sent this to us uh, this afternoon. Uh, minutes of the March 3rd, 2021 meeting. Is there a motion to approve those? So moved. Thank you, Martha. A second? Second. Uh, any comments about the minutes? Okay, uh, since we do Zoom, Sarah has to lead us on a roll call vote, even with something as mundane as minutes. So to approve the minutes, we have to go through this. Sarah? All right, Brian? Yeah. Julia? Yes. Linda? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jana? You're muted. Jana? Uh, so Jana was not there, so I think we're excusing her, okay. correct? All right. Uh, Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jen? Epstein. All right. And Jeff? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Sorry, can, I, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. You can. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. I don't need to vote. I just solved the issue. Oh, good. Yay. Um, so just a couple quick things for, our, for my chair's report. Uh, the first is we're back on Zoom here, as is obvious. Um, the governor, to, my, to what Sarah tells me, has extended this, I don't know if they call it a state of emergency, state of Zoominess, until next April. So we actually have the option to continue our meetings throughout the fall and theoretically through most of the spring on Zoom. We have the option to go back into council chambers and meet again in person. Uh, so while this is not a topic for the meeting tonight, it's something we should think about. How do we want to get together in the fall? Um, we can do, Sarah offered uh, the ability to do a hybrid thing where we could meet in person. We could uh, do a couple meetings in person, a couple uh, not. We could look at the public input in person perhaps if people wanted to actually show up so let's discuss that at the next meeting perhaps but maybe we can give that some thought how we want to proceed with this 
Zoom versus real stuff. Um, it's kind of scary to think about meeting real people again. It's all happened so quickly that we're immersed back into the real world. The other thing I wanted to mention was you may notice in Sarah's uh, emails to us, there are now four letters after her last name, A-I-C-P. Did anyone catch that? I did. Um, from yeah. now on, we are to refer to her as Sarah LaValle, A-I-C-P, or uh, uh, it's, uh, that stands for the American Institute of Certified Planners. Uh, and it's a really a national organization that certifies uh, that people are, um, have the academic qualifications, the relevant work experience, meeting all the essential skills required to serve Northampton effectively. So it's an honor for us to be served by Sarah. She took a, sounds like an onerous exam in the fall. Um, and again, combined, combining her academics, her experience, her uh, abilities is, it's so wonderful that we have a resource that we can really count on. So, yay, Sarah. Um, moving on, we have a very brief, theoretically, a very brief meeting tonight. And that is to determine whether or not to review the two proposals in front of us. The one from uh, the city regarding the New Haven Northampton Canal. And the second one from Michelson Galleries. Uh, both have approached the committee with the request to do an expedited review. Uh, hopefully we've had a chance to read their rationale for that. And it is our goal not to discuss the proposals, but simply to determine whether or not to uh, allow this expedited review process. What that would, so again, Jana and Jen, this is unusual for us to do this. Generally speaking, folks submit within cycle, which means in September or in January. And we run through that whole process, which takes a few months. Uh, both of the uh, uh, both of the folks, both the city as well as uh, Microsoft Galleries, have asked an expedited review due to what they see as extenuating circumstances um, and need approval of funds before uh, before this December or even January ability to release funds. So again, our goal is not to review the proposals, simply to determine whether or not uh, they meet our criteria for expedited review status. And if so, we'll move them forward for yet another special meeting this summer, where we will look at the requests and vote on the requests all in one meeting. So it's a, it will be a quick process there. Uh, is that, everybody got that, everyone on the same page here with that? So again, this should be, this should be a pretty quick thing, theoretically, for us to do. So I think we'll start with, and again, uh, Jana and Jen, we have to do things pretty formally here, which is to follow our rules of order and make uh, motions and do all that stuff. So I think we'll begin with, is there a motion to uh, approve expedited review for the Hampshire and Hampton Canal historic documentation? Um, Brian, Brian, before we get to a motion, could I just um, ask a couple questions um, for background going into this? Sure, please. Okay, so hopefully Sarah can help me out. I know we're not here to discuss the proposals, but I'd like to know the, the dollar figures uh, that we're gonna be asked for, particularly um, how they relate to what we expect is gonna be available to us in this budget cycle. I think the city's request is one sixth of 90,000, so that's 15,000. Um, I'm not clear on what the other request for CPC funds would be and I'd also like to know what the pot of money we have available is going to be. Sarah? So we can discuss the financial specifics of, of each application um, tonight with the applicants. Um, and I don't have a handle on the full financial picture for this upcoming fiscal year because there are a lot of unknowns at this point. Um, but this is the year when the bonding obligations really take a, a steep dip. Yeah. So we're looking at about 250,000 in debt service for the year. Um, I need to work with the finance director to figure out exactly how much we might be looking at from a- Round to the nearest 
50,000. <laughs> uh, so in local receipts, I would say probably about 1.4 million. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know at this point what this, what that state match might be, but it, it should be more substantial than it has been in previous years. The reason for my request is yeah, the, a surplus from from last year. Right. The reason for my request is I just I just want to make sure we're not and it, it, my my yeah, I don't think we are, but I just want to be sure we're not putting ourselves um, through the expedited process of of jeopardizing our ability to respond, you know, fully to what what we've got coming up. But it doesn't seem like the dollar figures are anywhere near that order of magnitude. So. No, and they're they're both fairly small requests. I know the the canal will, will be the smaller one. I don't know exactly what the the Michelson Galleries is looking at at this point, but um, given the the local receipts estimated and that steep dip in in debt service, this is a these are a pretty small requests. All right, but well, I can thank get, you. I can get more detailed information. No, I think that I think thing. that's really all I need. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Richard and Paul, can you help us out with a ballpark figure on what you will be asking for, if that's available? Uh, Paul, you need to unmute. Can you hear me? We can. Good. Thank you. Um, we are still getting a final figure. We have a quote from our mason and our roofer, which I believe is somewhere, the, the total uh, is somewhere around 185,000, uh, somewhere in that ball range. And we're, we're, we're sort of looking to get, you know, we can probably chip in maybe like 10% of that. I think if we're still trying to figure out how much we can do with that, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you with exact figures as soon as we know. But, uh, but that, that's what it's looking at right now. I think that the total, the total costs, the estimate anyways, um, is somewhere like 100, and just, just shy of uh, 200,000, 190 or something like that. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, Carolyn, can you do you have an approximate figure for the city proposal? Um, hi. Yes. Uh, so it is correct. Um, it is uh, in par with what um, Chris was suggesting. It's you know there's six communities coming together. They've all reached out and and are seeking um, their portion of a total ninety thousand dollars. So it would be about fifteen thousand dollars. Great, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, any more questions about the process before we get going? Yes, I, I have one. Linda? I want to I want to make sure that I interrupt the smooth flow of your of your process here. Um, it would help me, and and we didn't really ask this in the form. Um, it to know why the application is being put in now. I understand the urgency that's been described, but why was this not possible to put into the previous round? Was this an unknown uh, condition that, uh, or, or, or what? Um, some explanation for why it was necessary to do this on an expedited and not the, the previous round. So since uh, people have been kind enough to come tonight, I think it would be helpful to hear that from them before we then uh, discuss whether we want to proceed with an expedited review. Sure. Um, well, we um, it took us a little while to get structural engineers up there. When we first had uh, uh, some of the limestone falling from the building, we we had a, a, a we called a mason to go up there. Uh, the mason uh, suggests we get a structural engineer. The structural engineer went up there back and forth, I needed a quote, I needed a, you know, by the time we got that, it was already past time to, and then then we got the figure and then we were saying, well, how, how is this, how are we gonna do this? Mm -hmm. By that point, it was already too late to do it for your, your previous uh, meeting. So you're saying that this is an issue that was discovered during the, over the course of the last year, not, this a, year. not this year. a long standing issue that's just been getting worse. That you were um, aware of. You know, it I may mean, have I mean, actually been, but it came to your awareness within this last year's. The um, the condition as we know it now, I mean, it's a hundred year old building. So we know that, you know, we've done maintenance over the years, you know, we've, we'd, uh, you know, had, had, you know, 
changes to the roof. We've had, you know, so it, it, it's not unknown that the building needs maintenance, but the structural issues, um, that was something that we, we did not know, that we would need to you know, really just take the top of the, the limestone blocks off and rebuild the inner structure. Um, you know, it, it's not, it's past having somebody go up and, you know, seal up some cracks and, and do that where we, we really are risking some, you know, limestone blocks are moving to the point where that's no longer an option. And that was something that we discovered uh, this year in the spring. Thank you, that's very helpful. Um, in terms of this city's request, uh, you know, the city's been working through with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for um, throughout the course of 2020. And also they've helped to sort of corral these other municipalities who um, to develop the RFQ through um, uh, Mass Historic um, with the scope. And so it's been sort of this um, long effort herding cats and the other communities are together with um, funding. And um, so we have the RFQ ready to let this fall, but we can't do that unless we have all the funding packets um, ready. So it seems like, you know, this has been an effort over many, many years to try to accomplish this um, to pr this project and it has fallen apart at various times um, over the years. So it's, I think we feel it's really important to capture the momentum that we have now and that it feels like now is the time we can finally actually get it off um, um, the back burner and do something with it and not let it fail again. So that's our interest in um, really wanting to move it forward with this release of an RFQ for this fall. Thanks. Are you good with that, Linda? I am. Other questions for the applicants before we move on, Martha? Carolyn, um, do you have a sense of the success of the other five communities? Have they been able to raise the funds? When will those funds become available if they have? Are they also you know, waiting to hear? Um, I don't know for sure. I think that, um, um, uh, there are some communities that are having, are currently having um, meetings now and sort of getting to that process, the same sort of stage that we're in. Um, and um, the, but there are other communities that I think have already secured that money. So, um, but I don't have a complete list and I can't tell you for sure which ones have and haven't. And again, and the reason why I don't have that is that I'm sort of the, um, filling in for Wayne on this process. And so I don't have that granular level of um, detail. Thank you. Other questions for the applicants at this point? Okay, so let's go back to the uh, process again. Is there a uh, motion to uh, approve expedited review status for the Hampshire and Hamden Canal documentation. And I'll repeat some moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, discussion about this. Further discussion. Uh, again, for Carolyn to know and everyone, our our vote to approve an expedited review is not a vote to approve the project. It's simply a vote to move it forward. And at that point, we would have the option to throw it into the hopper with the other projects in September if we didn't feel comfortable at that, at that time. So we always have, we always have that option. Uh, once again, any discussion on this? So the motion on the table is to uh, um, move the uh, canal project forward and expedited review status and to vote on that in the, in the, as per our plan in one meeting that will come up before we begin the fall uh, proposals. Sarah, take us through a vote. Brian? Julia? Yes. Linda? Yes. Martha? 
Yes. Jana? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, just a quick aside comment. It's nice to see, Dan, your face occasionally showing up. We've never seen, oh, there you are. So I think it's the first time we've seen your face other than the your name there. So you must be somewhere with internet connection. So it's fun to, it's fun to see you. Not that you have, not that we have to see you all the time. If you want to <laughs> go back to your anonymity, I'm just saying it's, it's faces are nice. Uh, okay, moving on to the second request. Uh, is there a motion to approve expedited review status for Michelson Gallery, a facade restoration? So moved. Thank you, Jeff. A second? Second. Uh, discussion? Uh, Sarah and I were talking about this proposal uh, yesterday, I believe. And Sarah did mention the fact that this could open the doors to uh, a lot of other requests similar to this. Uh, we certainly have a wonderful historic buildings in Northampton. Um, and we've done work on quite a few of them, witness the continuing work that's being done. I don't think it's done yet, right? At Smith Charities mm -hmm. uh, in terms of facade work. Uh, but that we may see in a number of other private business owners moving forward with requests. So that's something to think about. Sarah also brought up the issue that this could perhaps be seen by private homeowners uh, as a legitimate uh, request to come in for historic preservation money for their own homes. If in fact there was a, uh, how does it say it in our plan? Uh, public funds to be used to advance a pub. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, public funds to be used to advance a public purpose. So somehow, if business owners, as Michelson Gallery says, is arguing that this is a public purpose, uh, then we may see uh, interesting proposals come forth. Um, uh, Martha, I just wanted to add to that, Brian and Sarah. Um, thank most, well, not most, maybe half, were on the um, committee when we reviewed the, I think, um, the old jail on Union Street. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important historic building. It was designed by Gertilee Bryant, who, um, among other buildings, designed the old Suffolk County Courthouse, which is at the Liberty Hotel in Boston. And we really went around and around on that one um, because it is privately owned. It's a condominium now. And in the end, I believe, um, did not support it. So I just wanted to remind folks of that. It was to uh, fix the central staircase that leads from the Union Street side up to the second level. Thank you for reminding us of that, Martha. And as I recall, part of the discussion was we were actually, it's a private condo. We were not allowed entrance into that building, the public. So it was public funds for a entity that did not allow the public to come in. Now the same thing could be said for private houses as well. Uh, Michelson's has done a remarkable job of making their uh, private space into a public art gallery that folks can come in. So uh, kudos to them for that. Paul, you had your hand up. Yes, I, I just wanted to add to that, that, um, that as opposed to say private residences and, and things on side streets, this is one of the largest buildings right in the center of, of the downtown area that has a lot of public visibility. And so I think it does, I mean, I, I know the argument, but um, it, it does have a visibility and a, and a public access even for people driving through that, that I think separates it from a lot of those other requests. You're muted, Brian. Richard. Hi, um, thank you all for meeting. I also wanna say just in response to that, 
that I think uh, those people who do know us uh, over the past 40 years uh, will know that we have always uh, opened the space at no charge to community groups. Um, and in fact, many community groups, and we're happy to give you a list, um, have used our space for um, their various functions, um, bringing people in. I know we have a couple of things coming up, right, Paul? The, the jazz uh, something. There's a couple of events coming up that are public. Um, I, I don't know, but but in general, I could say that um, we've certainly uh, supported, um, you know, dozens of um, Northampton groups uh, and let them use the space. Uh, and what we're looking for, as opposed to what you mentioned in the jail, is everything that's inside the building. Uh, we have, you know, for 40 years kept up um, and um, and we continue to do so. Um, this is the facade, uh, the cap that, you know, looks beautiful for the city and I would hate to see it go as well, um, but it's not integral to our business per se. Um, you know, people are coming in uh, and it really is for the city to have that facade. Uh, we could continue our business in the way we're doing it um, in the same space without that cap and facade that has to be rebuilt. That's all. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Julia, will you have something to say? Linda? Um, seems to me that we're sort of getting into the merits of the proposal itself I, here. And I, you know, I, I, I think it's probably useful to alert the applicant to what some of the issues are, but I would really look for them to be present, thinking about that and making, um, making a presentation at the, at the next meeting uh, on these issues. And there's also sort of the, I don't, I don't quite know how to talk about this um, because it's a, it's a private uh, for-profit business. And so the question becomes, you know, why, why should there be, uh, is there a necessity for the, the tax dollars to be, to be going in support of um, wh why can't the private business do this? And I really don't want to get into your finances, but it's really a different situation than most applicants find themselves in. Um, where I think we need to understand really what the, that we're not just that there isn't a capacity to do it um, yourselves through your, through your business and that there's really a, a need for the expenditure of the CPC funds. And I think Paul and Richard, uh, Linda is suggesting we don't, you don't go, you don't answer that question now, but be prepared right, right, right. Uh, to discuss it when, when we meet again. And hopefully that'll be at a time that we'll meet your needs. Uh, Julia? Yeah, the, um, but I'm back on the idea that what we're actually doing here right now is making a decision about expedited or not. And, I, and what I wanna be clear about is if we were to say no on expedited, would they still have an opportunity to submit in the regular cycle? Sarah, I'm assuming that's always the case. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and if I could just add also that the second part of expedited determination, since it is a reduced schedule and the committee doesn't have the opportunity for the more extensive public comment and question and answer in multiple meetings that you do with yeah. the typical funding round is to yeah. let applicants know about um, particular questions that they would want to address in the full application. Um, so these issues would, would definitely be part of that. And um, the committee should go back and do that for the canal application okay. as well, if there are any of those. Thank you. Linda? Um, I, I have visions of a Surfside condo in my, in my brain, so. <laughs> Um, but I, it would help me to know um, really what the assessment is of the danger level. And this goes to whether we really 
need to do it on an expedited basis, whether there really is some jeopardy to public health and safety um, by not addressing this before the winter and the water intrusion and ice intrusion over the, over the winter. Have you, have you received anything from the structural engineer that evaluates that or is it just kind of, well, it only makes sense, it's gonna get worse? No, I, I think the, um, the structural engineers were pretty clear that it, that it posed a risk and, and I think we we have copies of the structural engineers report, of course, and they're they're in the, the proposal. I don't know if you've seen the proposal. No, um, I haven't seen the proposal. Well, I, yeah. yeah. So so um, so yes, yes. So the structural engineer. Uh, well, there there were two issues. Structural engineer said it, it it did pose a risk. How much is is unknown because they don't know what's inside. So they need to take the top blocks off to get to the structural part inside all they know is how much the limestone blocks that are on the sides and the front have moved and so you've got large limestone blocks that are moving and leaving large spaces and so um the they have they have said that there there is an imperative to to getting it done um and then we know that most of the issues come you know, most of the damage happens in, in wintertime when it freezes and water gets in um, and with weather getting more extreme and cold snaps, you know, that we're, just, we're just nervous at this point that it poses a, a risk. You know, we had, uh, we had barriers out there on the sidewalk uh, for a while. The, the police took those back um, uh, one day, but, um, but yes, I, I, think it, I think it does pose a risk and I, the structural engineer's report um, does support that, as, as does the Mason's report. And what is the alternative to the repair? There is not an alternative to the repair. I mean, I mean it, it needs to be rebuilt. You've got a structural issue. It, it's not structural to the rest of the building, it's just structural to the facade itself. So there's so large limestone blocks, it stands up from the roof. So it's just a, um, just sort of a, a freestanding uh, wall, so to speak. And so those made of large limestone blocks and those are starting to shift and the masonry underneath that, it's, that is its structural support has eroded. Um, they haven't taken it off so they can't get in there. They don't know what to what extent, but there isn't a way to you know, quick fix or, you know, put a Band-Aid on it you know, at this point. The reason I was asking that, and pardon my, my ignorance, um, is that uh, Richard had mentioned that the, that the facade is really for the benefit of, of the city and the public and does not affect the business and you could continue your business, which led me to think, well, maybe you could re remove that facade, but I don't know if that's feasible. Then you've got a well, we, so that's what that was what was behind my question. I'm just right. trying to understand what the options are that you're really looking at here. My understanding is that we're not allowed to do that because of its historic designation. Mm -hmm. um, we had well, at one point tried to put some kind of a, a glass enclosure or a case in the front of the building. And we we weren't allowed to do anything that changed the look of the building because of its designation. So I think removing that entire, I mean, it would be fine for us and it would probably be less expensive. Um, but my understanding is that we're, we can't do that because you're removing some of the, you know, legacy of the, of the city, you know, some of, some of the historic look of the city. So uh, the specific rules on what we can and can't do is, um, is somewhat above my pay grade. But, uh, but my understanding is that we wouldn't just be able to lift it off and, and tar it over you know um, anything that that would result in a in a change to the exterior appearance of the of the facade would have to be reviewed by the central business architecture committee um but the, the building's designation on the national register of historic okay. places doesn't create any additional mm -hmm. impediments or review right. uh, martha comments yeah i just wanted to just say that uh the historical commission did review the full application for this um at our meeting in june as it was and obviously, we, we don't have the um, capability or capacity or the charge to approve, but um, there was a discussion about the historical importance of the building, of course, and, um, you know, unanimous, unanimously people felt that it's 
obviously worthy of preservation and a very important piece of architecture in the downtown, so. Thank you. I, I was not advocating for removal of the facade, believe me. <laughs> it's a wonderful facade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments before we vote? Questions? Chris? Actually, uh, we can do, I have a comment that doesn't, it doesn't impact this particular vote, uh, but I do wanna just speak generally to this, I, this can of worms idea that uh, about future follow on like um, applications. So why don't we just do the vote and I'll put my hand up again after that. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Any other comments? So the motion on the floor is to move forward the expired review status for the Michelson galleries. Sarah? Right. Um, Brian? Yeah. Yes. Linda? Yes. Martha? Yes. Jana? Yes. Uh, Sarah, we're losing you a little bit, I think. Sorry. Um, there you go. Dan? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. And I'm just gonna, my, I'm getting a bandwidth warning, so I'm just gonna show my video off. Oh, yikes, okay. Uh, Chris, you wanna uh, explain your issue to us? Sure, so um, I, I appreciate you and Sarah bringing up, uh, up this idea that this is gonna you know, potentially open the floodgates to, to similar um, applicants, private applicants. Um, and, and I, you know, I'm glad that uh, Martha brought up the, the jail and, and, and I'm, I'm with you on your recollection. We were able to, I think, <clears throat> adequately, you know, respond by saying that this wasn't really a public access situation. And, uh, you know, um, but that, that was a that was a sort of a one off. And if we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be getting applicants from other businesses or potentially private homeowners, um, my instinct is to come up with some sort of rubric for how we're going to address these. Are we just going to say no? And if we're going to start saying yes, um, you know, what are the criteria for making that determination? My suspicion is even if that was the path we decided to go, which is to come up with some sort of vague or vague or specific understanding of what, how we want to do these things in the future, um, we won't be in a position to do that uh, when we when we address this particular one. And I'm okay with that. I think it's okay for us to, you know, say, look, you know, we we see we see more of these coming down the road, and we're not sure that this is the best way to handle it, but we want to deal with this particular situation. But I think. I, I'm personally am going to need to get smarter about this if, if in fact we're going to because I actually um, professionally came across a situation where a, a private homeowner was considering applying for CPC funds and my my gut instinct was that was not appropriate use of CPC monies but um, so you know and it may be we're raising the alarm prematurely or unnecessarily maybe the, the, the floodgates don't open but um, uh, I'd rather be prepared, and I think I think we ought to spend some time thinking about this uh, and how we want to approach the issue in the future. Thank you, Chris. I completely agree with that. I think it's very important, you know, not just individual owners, but I'm thinking of um, in the Elm Street in the historic district. Um, there are a lot of multifamily properties um, that are privately owned, and while they're not open to the public, um, a lot of people live in them, and um, you know, what's to prevent them coming forward to us to request the same. So I'm assuming, Sarah, there are no, um, we have not developed a policy about this. <clears throat> Even after the jail proceedings, we didn't um, further develop any policy or criteria as Chris is suggesting. No, we, we haven't because except for the jail, it hasn't 
really come up. Um, mm -hmm. If the committee were to decide to fund uh, a private building with CPA funds, you would need to make a very clear determination that what was being done was in the public interest mm -hmm. um, and that preservation of the, the historic facade in, in this instance would justify that. Mm -hmm. And it, it may be worth also having a discussion about something like a preservation restriction may be appropriate in a mm -hmm. case where a private building were involved. Mm -hmm. That's not strictly required unless a historic asset is, is being acquired by the city. And that's not the case here, but something like that could help to protect um, the public mm -hmm. funds going into it. Mm -hmm. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, great. So that, that was a good discussion. We have our work cut out for us. Chris, thanks so much for bringing up that issue. That's, uh, we will now task you with developing that proposal and having it ready for the next meeting. Um, and we will hold, you're muted. So that was a yes that I heard from <laughs> a, a muted yes. Um, so we're good to move forward uh, with that. Um, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Uh, so developing the schedule for review of the applications is the next thing that needs to happen just to wrap this up. Great. Thank you, Sarah. And again, welcome, Jana and Jen. And thank you to uh, the applicants for coming in. And we will see you again, everyone, in August, correct? Yes. Sarah, August? Uh, it depends. So we would need to set up a schedule for review of the applications. So let the applicants know when they're due and when we're planning to meet to review them. Great, and we will look to you for that. All right, thank you so much. Um, once again, uh, uh, Jen and uh, Jana, this, our meetings are not usually 45 minutes. We usually go much longer. So don't think that this is how we roll because it generally is not. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Linda, thank you. Jeff, that's a second. We'll see you all when we see you. Thank you so much.